Hello, fellow freelancers. I'm back, at least for now. I'm still pretty busy, but you know, we'll see if I can, uh, how often I can keep doing these videos, if I can get back on schedule. Uh, today, I wanted to do a video uh, for, so this has to do with a question I received on my course. And it's a guy who, I think he's based in Russia, and he was talking about, basically he asked me, he said he's getting translation jobs, but they don't pay very well because he's based in Russia and the Russian agencies don't pay very well at all. And, um, and he translates from English into Russian. However, he, uh, so he was wondering if he should change from Russian into English and try to offer this as a service, maybe to uh, agencies in Europe or in the US or something like that, so he could get paid a bit more per translation. And uh, he, anyway, he was asking me what I thought about that and, uh, and how to go along with it. So I just wanted to address this quickly. And I thought I actually had made a video on this before, but I checked and I couldn't find it. So, um, so I guess I haven't, although I'm pretty sure I've, I've at least mentioned it in passing. But the question being, if you do English to Russian translations, should you try to do Russian to English translations if you think it'll earn you more? The answer is absolutely no, you should not. Uh, and the reason is, uh, well, the reason is you should always be translating into your native tongue. You should, when you translate from two languages, presumably one of them is your native tongue. One of them is one that you thinking, that you feeling, that you grew up with or whatever it might be. And the other one is one that you've learned or that you've picked up along the way. But either way, one of them is more native than the other. That's how it usually happens. That's how it almost always happens. and the more native tongue is the one you should be translating into, the one that you're more comfortable with in writing and or speaking, but especially writing. And um, you shouldn't switch it up. Uh, there are very few exceptions, uh, which usually have more to do with what's being translated than your level or anything. But, uh, you know, let me just get into this. Now, the reason for this is, if you think through it, it's kind of obvious. It's because when you read something, there's more chance you'll understand no matter what language, as long as it's one of the languages that you know. But when you write it, it has to sound like a fluent speaker, like a native speaker. And this is a lot more attainable if you're writing already in your native tongue. And so if, in fact, if you read something, you don't understand it, you can take all the time you want to go to the internet, to the dictionary, to whatever it might be, to try to look it up or even ask people say, well, what does this mean in this context? Does it mean this, that? And get all your facts straight and then write out the translation. I mean, all translators do this all the time. Go to prose.com, go to the forums or translatorscafe.com, word reference, you know, and you see a bunch of people asking questions all the time about stuff so they can get it clear into, uh, into their native tongue. In fact, a lot of these times, a lot of times these forms are interesting because people reply in their native tongue. So if you have a question from Russian to English, you'll ask a question in English, people will reply in Russian and you'll say, oh, thanks and reply in English. And then you get all these bilingual uh, conversations going on. It's interesting. Anyway. But that's why you should always translate from whatever language you've learned into your native tongue. And that's how it should always be. By the way, for interpreting, it's the opposite. These are for written translations. Um, so when you translate, and, and yeah, like I mentioned, it's because you can take all the time you want to understand it perfectly and, you know, to understand what's being said. But then it needs to be, it needs to sound like a native speaker when you write it, uh, when you finish writing it out. And, and this is also why you'll see people sometimes say that they can translate from, you know, Italian and Spanish into English, but then they won't necessarily translate from English into Spanish or Italian. And, you know, because they've learned both Italian and Spanish, but English is still their native tongue. And uh, so, yeah. Uh, now, I, I mentioned there's some exceptions. The exceptions usually have to do... So, for example, for me, I've always been Italian to English. That's it. I don't do English into Italian, and the few exceptions that I've had have been stuff like birth certificates, driver's licenses, report cards, stuff like that. Because, you know, let's face it, it's very easy what's that, whatever's written. Name, surname, ID number, nationality, you know, stuff like that. And so, yeah, I can do that in, in, the, other, in the other language and not worry too much about it. I've also heard it said, I haven't done it myself, but for financial statements, because, you know, there you have income statement, assets, liabilities, blah, blah, blah. So you just need to, if it's just a list of terms, you can translate them into the other language and in theory, at least, it should work well. Um, you know, the problem starts, you start getting a problem when you start having sentences because sentences, they're either more literary, in which case you want to evoke a certain feeling or sense, which you can only really get if you have a native tongue, or 
there'll be more, say, legalese and, you know, document types, in which case you really don't want, you want to make sure you say the right thing and, uh, and uh, don't mess anything up. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about double negatives and stuff like that, because I've seen stuff translated into English by people who are not native, you know, who's, for whom English is not their native tongue. And uh, they, and they'll use double negatives and stuff like that, which in a legal contract can be very bad because it basically means you're saying the opposite of what you want to say. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah. Oh, oh and uh, I did mention interpreters. I should say, if you're an interpreter, actually, it's the opposite. If you're an interpreter, what you should be doing is translating from your native tongue into the, uh, the, the language you've acquired. And, and the reason for this as well is, is, uh, is obviously if you think about it a bit, it's because you need to be able to catch everything on the fly, which means you need to understand everything that's been said. If you can't translate it exactly the same way, there are 10 different ways you can translate it into whatever language you need to say it. But you need to be able to understand on the fly. An example I have this is actually very old. It's from when I was young. I think it's the first time what, you know, that I noticed the interpreting world and, uh, and what they have to go through. And it kind of stuck with me. This, this was obviously, it must have been during a uh, presidential election because I remember they were talking about the gender gap between uh, you know, male voters and female voters. And it, and it had to do, it was a show from the States that was being broadcast in Italy. So this lady was interpreting it on the fly, like basically in real time as it was happening. And one of the shows had this comedian, and I think it was a political show, in fact, and this comedian, he was doing some act and he was juggling axes. And then one of them almost fell right between his legs. And he's like, oh, almost created a gender gap. It was something along those lines. And then the interpreter, she's like, oh, well, oh, that was a very bad joke. I'm not going to even, I'm not even going to translate it and moved on. And I remember thinking, I mean, I was young at the time. I was like, that wasn't such a bad joke. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like uh, a sexual joke or anything like that. She could have translated it. And then that got me thinking with it. Oh, wait, how could she have translated? There's no real way to translate it, especially with the implications of the gender gap that was going on back then for the vote. And, uh, and so I realized, I was like, oh, actually, she did a very good job translating that, you know, because she's, it was a joke, which is already hard to translate. And then, but she took advantage of the fact that, yeah, it almost fell between his legs. So she could say, oh, that was a dirty joke. I, I don't want to uh, translate it. I don't, you know, I, I don't want to translate it on TV, something like that. And, uh, and so, yeah, as an interpreter, you have to do that. You have to be able to improvise. But that means you really have to be able to catch things on the fly and understand the nuance and the mood and the, you know, all the different well, you know, everything that the person's saying and the context of it, uh, you need to be able to understand it on the fly so that you can find a way to translate it. And like I said, there are five, ten different ways to translate whatever you need and you can find a way to portray it and then move on. So, yeah, once again, if you're translating written translations, then you want to translate into your native tongue. If you're interpreting, it's the opposite. But always keep this as a general rule and try not to veer. Uh, once you get some experience, you can see in which situations you can try to sort of switch it around. But definitely when you're starting out, always stick to translating into your native tongue. And that's it. Don't offer the other way around because it's just going to get you into trouble. It's going to result in unsatisfied clients. It's going to result in bad translations. And it definitely won't do anything for your career. Uh, so yeah, that's it for now. I hope you found this helpful. And uh, please like if you do find it helpful. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye. Savedum.